guys, I'm Laura Vitali and today we're talking Thanksgiving classics. We're making a sweet potato casserole. Now by no means am I saying that this is the only way to make a, a sweet potato casserole, but this is my version of it. And over the years, I've gotten an overwhelming amount of requests for it. So I was thrilled to share it with you today. Now the ingredients you'll need are few and basics, but all together they make for one killer sweet potato casserole. Now the ingredients you'll need to start off with is of course some sweet potatoes. Now these are already cooked and I'll talk about these in just a minute. I need a combination of granulated sugar and brown sugar along with a pinch of salt. I've got some chopped pecans, a couple of eggs, some unsalted butter that's been softened at room temperature, a little bit of whole milk, some mini marshmallows and you'll also need just a few more ingredients that I just have in the fridge because I'm going to make a streusel topping and I want the ingredients to stay nice and cold. So that is it. Now truth be told, I wasn't always a huge fan of sweet potato pie because anywhere I've had it was either too um, bland and there wasn't enough texture. So for me, I love the sweet potato part and I love marshmallows, but I need a little crunch and that's where my um, pecan streusel comes in handy. And all together, you've got to trust me when I tell you it is unbeatable. Now the first thing you need to make sure you do is not boil your sweet potatoes. In my my opinion, I find that boiling sweet potatoes gets rid of all their flavor. So what I suggest you do is roast them. And I have about two and a half pounds of sweet potatoes that I roasted in a 350 degree oven for about an hour and 20 minutes or until they're really nice and soft. Now my oven is still preheated to 350 because I'm going to put it back in. But make sure you roast your potatoes because that they get really sweet and their flavor concentrates and you don't lose all their flavor in the water. So that's the big thing that I um, kind of wanted to make sure when I made my own version of it that I fixed was not boiling potatoes but more roasting them. And these are still really hot and now I'm just scooping out the flesh as much as possible. You want to wait until these are cool enough to handle but have we met? I'm pretty sure on my nightstand I've got an award for the most impatient person of life. So I'm going to do these while they're still really hot although I think you should wait a bit. And just scoop out all the flesh into your bowl. And I'm just taking my sweet, my sweet potatoes, my potato masher and mashing my sweet potatoes. You can leave them chunky, you can do them completely smooth. The world is your pickle, so you do you. I like them, meds and meds, a little chunky, a little smooth. I'm really not that picky to be honest with you. So I'm going to take them just a few more seconds further and then I think I'm done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my, I'm going to add my granulated sugar, my brown sugar, and my salt. Now this looks like it's a terrible amount, like a lot, but it really isn't. It's only a quarter cup each because the sweet potatoes are sweet enough. I don't want to add so much sugar that it's completely overpowering because we are going to be adding a sweet streusel and then a marshmallow. So although for two and a half pounds, this might not look like it's a lot, trust me, I think it's the perfect balance. I've got both kinds of sugar, my soft butter, and my milk, I'm going to hold off on the eggs just for a minute because my sweet potatoes are really hot and if I were to add the eggs right now, there's a chance that they could scramble a bit. So what I'm going to do instead is fold everything in and then just kind of push it down with my spatula and then just let it sit for about four to five minutes just to cool a bit before we add in the eggs. Okay, now while that just cools a bit, I'm going to work on my streusel because I honestly didn't realize that this bowl was sitting right behind me. So in this bowl, I've got some cold unsalted butter, brown sugar, and just a pinch of all-purpose flour. And I'm going to use a pastry cutter. You could use two forks if you want to. And I'm just going to mix these together and just break up the butter in that sugar and flour mixture. Now my streusel part is done. I'm going to add my eggs to my sweet potato mixture and the sweet potato mixture has cooled quite a bit. So now I'm not worried that it's going to scramble or anything. And just mix everything together until it's nice and smooth. That is just gorgeous. Okay, pop this into a buttered two quart casserole dish. I like the clear ones because I like that you can see the orange and then the white of the marshmallows. I love that. I'm going to just smooth this out a bit. Is that not a beautiful color? Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my streusel topping. I'm going to, if you wanted to, you could pop a pinch of cinnamon in here. 
I'm not going to because sweet potato casseroles around here are eaten right alongside the turkey. So I want to keep it a little bit, although it sounds crazy to say, but I want to keep it a little bit on the savory side rather than a really sweet side and kind of like compete with the pumpkin pie that you have to have on Thanksgiving. And then my pecans. You can use as much or as little as you want. I say between a quarter and a half of a cup. That's really up to you. I happen to love pecans. If you wanted to, you could use different nuts, but these are what I love best. And they're going to give you great crunch. Again, that texture that I was missing when I was eating, when I used to eat sweet potato pie, um, to me, it's like the sweet potato pie is awesome, the marshmallow is awesome, but it's too, you know, I need a little bit of texture. So that streusel topping is key for me to like the most awesome sweet potato casserole of life. I'm going to pop this back in the oven that I have preheating. Actually, it's already hot from when I was roasting the potatoes. I'll leave it in there for about 30 minutes, and then we'll top it with our marshmallows, and we'll be that much closer to shoving it in our faces. Because that's what you do at Thanksgiving. It's not? Well, I do. My casserole was in the oven for about 35 minutes. Now, I used a glass baking dish so that I could show you this, but you can see, if you pay attention to right over here, you can see the bottom layer is a really lovely pale yellow color, like a pale orange, and then there's a layer right here that has now gone a bit crispy from that little streusel topping that we made, and then it's to die for. You can eat it just like this, but if you like a bit of marshmallow, I got like a bit of marshmallow, then we're going to top it with marshmallows. These are mini marshmallows. You can do a really thick layer, a really thin layer, you can do half, you can do a whole, I mean, it's up to you, really. I'm just going to do a thin layer, about a cup of marshmallow, mini marshmallows. I don't want to do too much because then it just tends to be overpowering as I keep piling them on. <laughs> I do want to do one layer though, not multiple layers. And I'm going to pop this back in the oven for around five to seven minutes or until they start to kind of soften and puff up a bit and then we'll be ready to serve. That's it. This looks stunning. Now what you must know is if you cook with marshmallows, um, you know that, whoops, almost lost my fork. If you cook with marshmallows enough, then you know that once it starts to cool, the marshmallows will start to deflate. So this is really best when it goes from oven to table right away. And I'm gonna go in for this little corner. Look how beautiful this is. I need to hold on to my mopping because this is really, really hot. Look at that, it's almost souffléed. I know, I know what you're thinking. I've gone mad and I have, I've also suddenly gone British as well. And I'm okay with that if you are. What a gorgeous delight that is. Okay, I want a piece of everything. Got the sweet potato, the marshmallow, look at that. The pecans. This is hot though, so give me a second. I can't even. I can't. It is so fantastic. Everything about this is perfection. That sweet potato is so light and fluffy. It's not dense at all. Those pecans definitely hit the spot with a little bit of crunchiness and to top it off, that sweet marshmallow layer is just like the cherry on the sundae. Add this to your holiday table. Go to LaraInTheKitchen.com to get this recipe. And if you do recreate it, please let me know how you like it and share a picture with me on social media. I will leave all my links down below, so make sure you follow me there because I am a ball of fun. I hope you enjoyed spending time with me, and I'll see you next time. Here's a bite. You'll need some cooked sweet potatoes, a combination of granulated sugar and brown sugar with a pinch of salt, some chopped pecans, a couple of eggs, some unsalted butter, Joseph Daniel. What's with the fake grapes? <laughs> How did I not notice that? Anybody want a grape? Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm ready to go over your head, not on your head.